All right, so we got Marvel Spider-Man 2 San Diego Comic-Con panel cut downs. Got to the video. Now listen. Shout out to everybody that went to uh, San Diego uh, San Diego Comic-Con. I wish I, you know, can go to a Comic-Con one day. Hopefully I can. Hey, MJ. I have another name for you. Craven. Man, Craven the nuisance. Doesn't he have like a movie coming out? Sorry, if you guys hit like streaming or whatever in the background, that's what happens when you have siblings. Sorry about that, y'all. Venom! Again, sorry for, uh, please stay Sean. Sorry for like all the stuff in the background. Right, my first question for you is, where do we find Peter, MJ, Harry, and Miles at the beginning of Marvel Spider-Man 2 now that we're in the, the third installment? Or are these the people? Well, you can find us all in the back being late to the panel because we were watching the story trailer as you guys were all watching it backstage. True, that's first true. off. So, um, yeah, I think it is. What, what's really great about this game is that we're gonna pick up roughly nine to ten months after um, the events of Miles Morales, which. Hey, that little thing, this little thing right here, hard. And what's really great is the kind hard. Of Miles, they're a well-oiled machine. They're a great team. They lean on each other. They really support each other and are really protecting the city. But at the same time, there's a lot of things going on in their life outside the mask. Uh, Miles is applying to college and trying to figure out how to write his college essay, and he's yep. starting his uh, teaching career. And then you have MJ, who is still at the Bugle but um, under a new leadership with the return of J. Jonah Jameson at the Daily Mail. Ooh. Wow. <laughs> damn, damn, guy. all right. And, and then, Bill, so my next question is for you. So what, can you talk about the, the dynamic of these characters and how working with Insomniac, they're keeping... Hey, you guys know I'm going to be uh, the, the next Miles, Miles Morales and the next Spider-Man, right? Still making it their own. Together, working all together, we're all one team. Uh, we all love the characters. We're all... Our goal is to make something that you love, that when you play it, you say, this was made by fans for fans. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. John, my next question is for you with the, the new villains that we've seen in this, this game, confirmed villains with Craven, Venom, and Lizard. Can you talk narratively why you, you felt those choices for those villains were important? For us, it really started with Craven. Uh, he's our catalyst for, for the story, right? Like, okay, the nuisance. You know, before the game starts, he's halfway around the world being Craven, uh, hunting, uh, trying to find the ultimate prey. And he watched from afar as the events of the first two games occurred. Um, and he decided, you know what? There's a lot of stuff going on in New York City. That, that might be my new hunting ground. So, um, like I said, Craven's a catalyst for, for everything happening. When he comes to, to New York City, you know, a lot of things start, start going wrong. Uh, you know, uh, we, we have Lizard, um, Coming, coming out. We have uh, the wheel. Symbiote, uh, what about out. the wheel? Um, and, the... and as you saw briefly in, in, in that trailer, um, Miles is forced to, to come face to face with the Mr. Negative, the, the guy who killed his dad. So there's a lot of drama. Uh, that, that's what about the wheel? I heard that the wheels that the wheel might come through. My next question for you. So I think one of the things fans really appreciate about both of the games is just the environment, just the lived in cities that it feels it feels like a character in its own. So can you talk about how you elevated that with this new game, especially with the PS5 technology and the new locations that we'll see, like with Coney Island and, and Queens and, and stuff like that? Totally. Yeah, it, we're super excited to finally be able to bring Brooklyn and Queens to our fans. Okay. Uh, obviously, Miles is from Brooklyn. Um, Peter Brooklyn. From Queens. Brooklyn. <laughs> Not only does it increase the gameplay space, so there's a lot more. Uh, I'm gonna say, like, bro, the game's already here. big enough. Uh, like, bro. It has some really cool, um, obviously, Marvel landmarks as well as New York landmarks. Um, for example, I know, I know I'm from Queens, right? Has wanted to visit Aunt May's house and perhaps where, see where Peter lives. I know a lot of fans had wanted to interact with that space, so just being able to like walk in and, and see where he lives is incredible. Oh, and that's a, hey, that's a big house. Aunt May's house. Um, the other thing that's really cool is it's introducing a lot of cool landmarks. Like Guys, here airplane. My bad, y'all. Sorry. In our uh, gameplay uh, trailer that we <laughs> produced a while back, you can now chase the lizards on the East River, which is awesome. Okay. Um, personally, for me, I just love seeing. Brooklyn Bridge, the Williamsburg Bridge, and being able to just swing across the water. It's an incredible experience. Especially if you're from New York, you will say that that's like very surreal. Can you talk about how the, the new traversal techniques that we are implementing in this game affected uh, what you pro your approach to this and, and how you elevate it? Hey, shout out to the guy that's uh, a uh, asking the questions. These are very good questions. Skyscrapers anymore? And so we thought, what's a really great opportunity? Something we've seen on, on comic book covers, we've seen it in the movies, we can add the web wings. 
Um, and that, that has really changed how we look at traversal. Swinging is always our Spider-Man core. That's where we come from. But uh, what we did is design the web wings so that we could integrate them and weave them in with swinging. You gain height and you build speed um, between swinging and the web wings, and you go back and forth and really kind of weave your way through the city. It's really fun. That's you know, the best thing about Spider-Man. lower spaces. There are some new spaces. <laughs> that's what I like to do. I just like to roam around the city. <laughs> and, uh, the other boroughs by crossing the river. So that's another opportunity where we could really... Uh, well, we added these things called jet streams or wind tunnels. You really build speed there, and yeah. they just shoot you right along when you're on the web wings. It's really fun, and you know, it's one of the ch chances for us to really push the power of the PS5 there and like hit a level of speed that we hadn't had in the. PS5. Yeah, because that thing about to blow up the PS4. <laughs> hey, I don't even think that thing is going to the PS4. Negative in the trailer. So can you just briefly talk a little bit about how he's still coping with the effects of his game and, and dealing with the loss of his father? Man, well, y'all seen Miles' trajectory, you know, yeah. and just with everything that he's been through with his family and his friends and just getting into this new world that he's, you know, being introduced to. But he's now owning this this power. But, you know, um, coming back to Martin Lee, man, that was something big. I didn't think that we would uh, revisit that because we had a lot of emotions on set. And my last question, because we touched on it as well, but the, his powers and his abilities, how is he really, we, we see them evolving and you, you see him. He has a couple new abilities, so okay. how is he really coming into the zone with that, with his abilities? Oh, we got some stuff coming for y'all. Y'all, y'all get ready. October 20th, <laughs> you're going to be surprised. You're going to be shocked. You're going to be on your feet. Oh, okay. Screaming. Okay. You're going to be laughing. I ain't crying. Get ready, man. We got some I'll never cry. I apologize to employers everywhere because I hear a lot of people going, I've, I've already booked, you know, time off from work, you know, from right. on October right. 20th for like three days. I'm like, right. What? We have MJ in Bro, this is going to be the biggest game of the year coming out besides Zelda. In this game and how her, her, her storyline has evolved from when we last saw her. Yeah, I think she's coming to her own a, a lot more. I think she's understanding who she is as a reporter and as a writer a lot more. Um, you know, she spent a lot of time away from Peter in Simcaria. Um, Honestly, I wish I could just jump off the building so Spider-Man can come and swoop and get me. Um, you know, she's writing. You know, there's a reason what? why we wanted Yuri, Laura, and Najee all here because they are a team. They are, you know, they complement each other really well, not just. Hey, this thing is hard, bro. This, th I need this. I might steal it. All kind of working together as a team, figuring out how we put this game together, and I know I we couldn't be working with better people like i love these people they're awesome oh that's nice hey, yeah, more, bro. They're, the, they're the best oh man there's somebody else that we can't forget about on this panel uh -oh. that is the, the venom of the He's venom, in of the venom. venom. <laughs> tony todd it, it is truly an honor to for have you on this panel right now let's, yeah, let's and all of a sudden i get a call from insomniac to to test drive venom <laughs> And I got to say, it's been the most exciting voiceover journey that I've had wow. to date. Yeah. Wow. That's nice. Uh, uh, you know, they about to get, hey, they giving him millions. I know there, is there a story or something along with how, how this happened? Oh, yeah. There, um, so I remember we, we cast a lot of the characters pretty quickly. Like, obviously, we had, you know, Miles, Peter, uh, MJ. Um, and then really early, we actually, like right before COVID, I think we cast Craven, and I knew, I was putting off Venom. I was just putting it off. I was like, I know there's already, you know, there's going to be so many opinions of what people, and I know I was scared to death. And I remember uh, Patrick, our dialogue um, lead, was asking me, like, well, what are you looking for? And I said, uh, I don't know. And then I remember it just happened to be on the Internet one day, and I was uh, listening to one of the, I think it was the Candyman, uh, uh, the new Candyman uh, trailer, and I heard Tony, and I was like, hey, if we could get like a Tony Todd, that would be the one. And then a couple weeks go by, I don't think anything about it, and Patrick messages me and goes, you're not gonna believe this. <laughs> Tony Todd's interested. And I remember he sent a real quick tape in, and it was like, sorry Tony, it was really bad like audio quality, but it took like three lines and I was like, that's it. Please, please hire him. Please, whatever he wants, give it to him. And uh, I like that though. I like that. I like that. Like he gave him like the freedom and stuff like that. He's incredible. We have a wonderful, we, you know, there's, you know, there's four of us here from Insomniac, but we have so many Insomniacs who are putting so much work into this game. And I, again, I just want to say if they're somehow listening to this, somehow 
thank you for all the work that you guys are putting into it right now. It's, it's incredible. You can tell a lot of people around the workspace like him. It's just, you know, he seems very, like, thankful and, like, very grateful and stuff. You can imagine when you're you know? in a family, everybody has opinions, right? Yep. And I think it's probably the only decision I've ever made to be a creative director in 10 years where I just said, Tony Todd is going to be Venom, and everybody said yes. So, um, uh, can you just talk a little bit about Venom's motivations and, and his, his personality? <laughs> Why is he so important to the narrative of this game? Well, I can really uh, voice Venom yeah, easily. Venom is a symbiote, right? Um, and I think the, the thing that... Um, a lot of symbiote stories have in common, and the, and the reason why I think we, we connect with them really well is that it's, it's a simple human story. We, we all have a darkness inside of us. And then you, you put the symbiote on top of that. It really brings out the, the, the dark parts. I don't have a dark inside of me, honestly. Power and responsibility. You heard I got all type of light inside of me. A couple minutes ago. Um, and what happens in the story is that that sense of responsibility starts to go away. It's really interesting when you bring the symbiote into, you know, these relationships, uh, how it really challenges them, not just externally, because there's cool powers. You know, Ryan was talking about having that, that control in your hand. Oh, my God, it's amazing. Um, but the, the, the people you love around you. Tony, I'm coming back to you. Can you talk about your approach to bringing the voice of it to life and how you approached it? For me, Venom was fun to do, and I wanted to make sure that there was a joyous quality in his in his destruction. I'm yeah. It was fun for you cuz it scared the hell out of us. Always <laughs> fun. <laughs> yeah, it'd be I funny when we were uh, in the recording booth cuz we would record separately when we were doing gameplay dialogue and every once in a while Tony you would come and play in our headphones before headphones. a line and it was like oh god. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> I wouldn't expect it and it was terrifying. And Brian, I'll come back to you real quick. What was that like when you heard Tony voice? Hey, voice actors are just like unbelievable. Yeah. Well, first relief, because I was like, okay, we made the right choice for sure. Um, and I think then just general excitement. And I think Tony is so talented that, you know, sometimes depending on, you know, we have so many different characters or so different, so many different actors, you know, sometimes we're, you know, depending on what the role calls for, are we going to, you know, adjust the, the way that they do the line and you just let Tony be Tony. Yes, yep. I was say, yeah, don't even like. It was like a gift come true to be able to. Uh... Uh, to cement myself in the whole voiceover family and world and meet new friends and uh, oh, that's nice. Quests and I, I, I'm still pinching myself because I'm a gamer and I'm telling you I can't wait for this monumental masterpiece to drop. <laughs> that's right. Sizzle. Sizzle. I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you, can you do the iconic We Are Venom line for, for everybody? Turn it up. I turned it up. It's all out. Do you want? No, okay. <laughs> We got some, some special surprises coming up for you guys. I think the next thing we want to talk about is the collector's edition statue that we have right here. I, I think it really represents what this game is about. You know, it, you know I said... I uh, need that right now. About, you know, it's called Spider-Man 2 for a reason because we have two iconic characters um, in, this, in this great piece of art, but also is, it's going to take two Spider-Men to take on something so powerful. So yeah, to take on that menace. Able, but nothing come their way. I mean, you know, if you look at, you know, whether it's Doc Ock in the, in the first game and then Tinker and, and Miles Morales, like, Venom is, a, is literally a whole different beast. Yeah, he's a menace. I'm on gloves right now. Like, that's... <laughs> oh, these? What, yeah, what, 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 what is that for? Well, I'm, I'm... Dorian, before we... I think we should play the video. I, I think we should play What the video? video? Let's go and play that video. Right? What video? What? Uh -oh. What video? Oh, this is the uh the bundle. Wait. This is the bundle. For the the Spider-Man 2 bundle. Nice. One more time. A three. One, two, three. Yeah, that's crazy. That looks pretty. That's pretty, bro. That's pretty. That's pretty. That's pretty, bro. Please stay, Sean. Where is it? Oh my God! Oh my God! 
I need it. I need it. I might steal it. Oh my god. Like Marvel, so they, they keep everything so tight lip. I found out about this oh. five minutes before we came out here. That's how serious they are. So, Brian, can you can you speak to this epic, amazing, beautifulness not right here? Uh, this has been one of the biggest secrets throughout the entire development of the game that we were to have a, the console and the dual track. Um, so Guys, I might have to save up my coins for that. I mean, I think, you know, we talked about the symbiote playing a big role. I might have to save up my Mario coins for that, y'all. The console, and we thank, yeah. thank PlayStation for. Uh, going above and beyond with the design Y'all, I might have to really Y'all, we might have to work as a unit To get that all, all in all, that being said I want to say thank you again to this incredible panel Thank you guys Shout out to the cast, bro Shout out to the cast, bro Everybody Oh my god Comment down below, man What do you guys think about this? First of all Oh my god it, The whole cast Round of applause We uh, actually reacted to um, you know, the, the PlayStation, sorry, the Spider-Man 2 bundle, uh, the same day the Spider-Man story trailer came out, and, um, and so, yeah, it, it was pretty fire, um, so we already knew about this, but it, it's just, I, I love to get, like, the reaction of, like, you know, everybody at Comic-Con and stuff like that, uh, but yeah, like, now looking at it, at, like, in real person, bro, this looks absolutely fire, bro. Absolutely fine, especially the controller. The controllers and like it's all black, but then like you have like the Spider-Man thing for the touchpad. Then you have like the like like the red plus the Spider-Man. Oh my god, bro. It's crazy. Honestly crazy. Shout out to all the voice actors, bro. Uh like I said, it is voice actors are absolutely amazing, bro. They can listen, it's crazy. Um I'll see you later for the next one I'm out. And